Today we'll be going through how to install the latest release of Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, the desktop edition, and dual boot it alongside Windows 10 or 11. Let me download the image first. Going to the download section on the Ubuntu.com website, I'll post the link in the description below. Then I'll select 22.04 LTS, the desktop edition. I'll click on that. That'll launch a download here in a moment. I'll confirm that it's Ubuntu 22.04, the desktop edition, AMD 64 for a 64-bit processor. And this is the install image. I'll hit save and let it start downloading. Now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app, which will help me flash the image onto a USB CD or DVD of my choice. First, I'll select the image that we just got done downloading. In my downloads folder, I have Ubuntu 22.04, desktop AMD 64. I'm gonna select open. Then in the middle, I can hit change where I can change the USB CD or DVD that I want to select. I have this verbatim store and go 32 gig USB where I'm going to flash my image onto. Just know that whatever USB CD or DVD you flash your installer image onto, well, the contents of that storage disk is going to be deleted. That way the installer can be flashed on it instead. So make sure you have the proper one selected as I know I do. I'm going to hit continue. I'll also mention a couple other bootable disk creator apps. You can use Unet Bootin or Rufus if you want to check those out and you don't like Belena. Finally, with the proper storage disk selected, I'm going to hit flash. The computer is going to ask me if I want to give this administrative privileges. Yes, I do to start the flashing process. Now this will take a few moments while things are flashing. All right, now that the flashing process is done, I'm going to take my USB out of the computer that I'm currently using and go to the computer where I want to actually dual boot Ubuntu and Windows on and start setting up a couple things over there as well on the Windows side of things. All right, and on the Windows side of things, I'm going to launch the Start menu and search for something called Disk Partitions. We'll get a match called Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions in the Control Panel. Click on that and let's edit our partitions here on the Windows computer. That way we can have some room to install Ubuntu on this system. Notice I have a 100 megabyte EFI system. This helps you boot in, don't touch this. Also, do not touch your recovery partition. Otherwise, you can lose the ability to recover Windows. All I'm messing with is the root file partition. So mine's called C. You might have multiple disks. Make absolute sure you're selecting the proper disk and you're making edits to the disk where you want to dual boot Ubuntu 22.04 onto. I only have the one disk, so I really can't mess it up. It has 128 gigs. That makes sense. That's how much space I have overall. What I'll do is I'll select that root file partition, right click, go to shrink volume and shrink some of this space in order for me to have it for Ubuntu. Of course, I'm using some of this storage disk in order to use Windows on it. So I'm going to give about half the space to Windows and half the space to Ubuntu. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure that you at least have 32 gigs of space for Ubuntu. Otherwise, it most likely will not work. Anyways, when I hit shrink, that will cut this in about half. Notice this C partition is now around, around 64 gigs, and we have around 62 and a half allocated for our Ubuntu space. Also notice that there's nothing here. It's unallocated space. No worries here. We'll keep it just like this, and we'll handle this on the Ubuntu installer side of things. I'm gonna exit out of here and tell you to always back up your data. If you have stuff, on this Windows side of things that you wanna keep safe. Back that data up in case something goes wrong with the installation and Windows can't boot anymore. It's always better to be safe. So there's two ways now to boot into that bootable disk that you just created. One way, if you go to boot and you go into change advanced startup options, this will actually allow you, if you hit restart now, to restart your device and then choose a different disk, perhaps a CD, DVD, or USB that you wanna boot from instead of booting into Windows, which is convenient because then you are able to get into the USB CD or DVD that we just got done creating. Otherwise, what you can do is shut down your computer and get into BIOS. I'll show you how I get into mine, which is basically spamming F2 as my system is beginning to load up. What I'll do is I'll change the boot priority around that way that USB CD or DVD that we created is the first to boot on the computer where I want to dual boot Ubuntu and Windows. I will mention this is for UEFI based BIOS. So make sure you have a modern BIOS 
set up on your computer in order to go through the rest of the installation process. And on my computer, when it's first loading up, it's going to ask whether I want to boot in a BIOS. The key for my BIOS is F2 or the delete key. Yours might be something different in order to get in a BIOS. Make sure to look it up for your particular motherboard or computer. So since mine is a newer UEFI based BIOS, yours might be different, but I can use the mouse and mine, making it a little more convenient. What we're looking for is to change up the boot priority. Conveniently enough for me, it's available here on the right hand side. So I can look through and try finding the USB that I just got done flashing on, but it doesn't seem to be in one of the top four here. So I can either click the boot menu option F8, but let's go to the advanced mode for me, F7, because this might be what your BIOS more closely resembles. On mine, I have tabs up top, so I can select between the tabs. I have main, AI tweaker, advanced, monitor, and boot. Yours might say boot or boot priority. Make sure to find this in your BIOS and then go down. You want to select your boot option number one to be the storage disk, either USB, CD, or DVD that you just got done flashing. So I know mine's a 32 gigabyte USB. So if I look through the list, I should be able to find something that resembles that USB. And here it is right here, my verbatim store and go 1100. It's got about 32 gigs. I know this is the correct one. So I'm going to select storage disk. If you have multiple, avoid selecting the partitions, select the entire disk. So this one's the entire disk. I noticed that by seeing no mention of partitions. Anyways, I'm gonna press enter on this and this should be enough to allow us to boot into our live environment or installer. I'll make one more mention here in BIOS. If you are trying to install Linux, you'll want to make sure that you have your secure boot settings disabled or set to another OS besides Windows, or else your system will keep trying to boot into Windows, regardless of what you have put into your computer. Also, if you can find fast boot on your computer, you might want to disable that one as well if you're having trouble booting into your Linux environment. All right, and if you made it this far, please smash that like button for me. You're ready to install Ubuntu alongside Windows. There's a few options here. You might get past this grub menu because there's an auto timeout. By default, it's going to select the first option, which is try or install Ubuntu. You can also select Ubuntu Safe Graphics if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. This will help you render graphics since they do not offer great open source drivers for that. This will help you have NVIDIA. Otherwise, you can go with the try or install Ubuntu. And if you have any issues with graphics, try the second option. All right, we're going to select that and give it a moment to load up the system here. You'll get a screen with two options, either the try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu option. Since I'm trying to install, I don't need to try anything out. If you do want to try something out, feel free to use that one as well. You can install from there if you need to. Anyways, with install Ubuntu selected, I'm going to select your keyboard layout and then hit continue. On this screen, we're asked about updates and other software that we want to install with Ubuntu. I'm going with the normal installation and I'm going to download updates while installing Ubuntu. That way I don't have to do it later. If you need special proprietary graphics or Wi-Fi adapter drivers, you can select this option to get those. This is only if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or perhaps some Wi-Fi adapter that doesn't necessarily work out the box. You can always try that option. Either way, with the normal installation selected, meaning you get a web browser, utilities, office software, games, and media players, I'm going to hit continue. And now here's where the real fun begins. For most of us, we can just install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager, but I'll show you the workings of the partitions by selecting something else and manually setting things up. Because some of our storage disks where we're trying to install Ubuntu alongside Windows can be quite complicated. And sometimes it's nice to just be able to create and resize things yourself. So I'm going to hit continue with something else. This screen will now show us what all available devices we have. Notice dev SDA. That is the overall storage disk, meaning it's this entire space. Then you have subcategories of that storage space. Some of it's free space. Others you'll notice mention windows or perhaps nothing at all. So if we remember, we 
made some free space and look at this at the very end we have that free space available to us around 67 gigs for myself and up above that we have the 69 gigs which belongs to windows we do not want to touch this or any of the partitions before that that were already made by windows make sure that you're not messing with those at all otherwise you will screw up the windows side of things Instead, I want to focus on this free space. What I'll also mention is if you scroll down, you'll notice you have more partitions. This was the recovery partition earlier, and then a free space of two megabytes at the very end. That's just because of the bounds of the storage disk isn't quite aligning perfectly. No big deal. We'll leave all that alone. Again, we don't want to touch anything besides the free space that we created in Windows. Another mention is if you have more than one storage disk, make absolute sure that you're messing with the proper one you wouldn't want to be messing with the wrong storage space. I know mine's because all of the sub partitions are adding up, but yours could be on dev SDB or SDC or so on and so forth. You can have multiple storage disks. Again, be very careful to have the proper one selected and make sure that the partitioning scheme is looking familiar to what you had in Windows. I know mine is, and I know this is the free space, so I'm gonna right click on this and hit add. What this will do is let me choose a size, and I'm gonna use primary for the new partition, and use the beginning of the space and the ext4 journaling file system. Then, as far as amount point goes, I want this to be my root partition, so I'm just gonna do that by using this slash and then hitting OK. What will happen then is that this partitioning tool will now fill in this slot here called SDA5. Notice up top, we have free space at the very beginning, then SDA1, partition one on the disk, which is EFI partition to help Windows boot. Following that, we have SDA2, unknown here, something for Windows, SDA3, the third partition, which is the C or root file partition for Windows. Then we have SDA5, which we just created, and that one is the root partition for Linux. Finally, we have SDA4, which was the recovery partition for Windows. Now that we understand what's all here, the last thing we need to do, and an important step, is the device for the bootloader installation. If you hit the drop down, you'll notice many options of different partitions. We want the one that says Windows Boot Manager. So mine's on dev SDA1, yours might be on something else you'll know we'll click and select the proper location to install grub the bootloader from linux and this will add both your windows and ubuntu side by side on grub so you can select between the two and use whichever one you want if you have everything set up you're now ready to hit the install now button to install things just be forewarned after hitting this the storage disk that has windows on it will be modified and could potentially lead to losing data if you're confident in your setup you can hit the install now button and you'll be warned one more time, changes are going to disk. As long as everything's okay, you'll hit continue and select a time zone and hit continue. Now we're ready to set up a user and the computer name. I'm going to use Savvy Nick as the name, Savvy Nick as the computer name, Savvy Nick as my username. Of course, use whatever you want. Put in a password, confirm that password for the user. Do not forget this because you will be logging in with this user. And when all of this is filled in you can hit continue and the installation process has now begun this can take anywhere between 10 minutes to an hour so take your time wait it out and let ubuntu do its thing after this we'll be ready to load into our newly installed ubuntu system and check out windows as well okay and after the installation process is finished for ubuntu you'll be able to hit the restart now button. After you hit restart now you should get a screen that says please remove the installation medium then press enter. This means to remove the USB, CD, or DVD, which you're using to install Ubuntu alongside Windows. So it's safe to remove that media at this point. And after you've done that, just press enter. If you, for some reason, miss this, not a big deal. Shut down your computer, remove the installation media, start it back up. One last thing that you'll want to confirm is that Ubuntu is the first item in your boot priority using BIOS and that will help you load in, which will allow you to select between Windows or Ubuntu. So I'm going to press enter now and let the system load in. If you get this grub screen, be careful it might time out. You just have to press a key. You'll notice that you have a few options, including Ubuntu at the very top and Windows Boot Manager as the third option, at least in my list. Congratulations, if you have this, you've successfully set things up. Let's make sure that our Windows side of things is still working 
by selecting the Windows Boot Manager and letting Windows load up. Awesome, I got the welcome screen. So I'm gonna put in my password and see that things are loading. This is a great sign, nothing's missing. Everything seems to be working correctly so far. Fantastic, everything loaded up properly for me. Now I'm ready to try out my Ubuntu side of things. I'm going down to the bottom to the start menu to restart or shut down my computer. Let's give it a few moments here to get back to that selection menu. Great, I got the grub menu again. I'm going, I'm selecting Ubuntu this time to test out that side of things. Let's give it a few moments to load. And here's the login screen. That's great to see. I'm gonna type in my password that I created for my user earlier. And congratulations, after you've logged in, you'll be welcomed by a little wizard for Ubuntu. We'll run through this and talk about your new dual booted system and how to get the best use out of Ubuntu. One thing I'll mention right away is that if you wanna use hibernation or relieve a little bit of stress off of your memory, you'll want to create a swap file. I have a link in the description below for how you can do that. Most modern systems use a swap file instead of a swap partition, so I didn't show you how to create a swap partition. It's much easier to manage a file. Let's go through this by hitting skip. And no, I don't want to send information to Canonical. So I'm going to select that option, hit next. My privacy, I'm going to turn off the location services. Don't need the computer knowing where I'm at. Hitting next will take you to the ready to go screen, which tells you about all the various different great packages that you can install here on Ubuntu. Some of them you'll be very familiar with and are very popular. A great place to start is the software center, which they allow you to open up on. So let's open that up. To check things out a few moments to load the catalog and here is how you can install various different applications a great place to know about the ubuntu software center start installing those applications that you need and let's exit out to talk about the desktop environment here for those of us who are unfamiliar recently ubuntu made the change to allow us to put stuff on the background here as we can see the home users directory is here this takes you to the current logged in user directory and gives you access to stuff like the desktop, documents, downloads, music, and other things. I'm gonna exit out of here. I have more in-depth videos, of course, about the desktop and reviewing what's new with Ubuntu 2204. I'll post another link in the description below, but up top you have activities, which gives you access to workspaces, as well as a search bar. In the middle top, you have the calendar and the date and time with notifications. On the far right hand side, you have volume control, your wired or wireless connection control. You have balance, which is the current power setting. So you can change around your settings, especially if you have a laptop, make sure to check this portion out. Settings gets you to the general settings page, locking the current user out or powering off, logging out, shutting down and restarting here as well. And then on the far left hand side, this is called the dock which gives you access to some of the default applications installed on Ubuntu 22.04, including Mozilla Firefox, Thunderbird Mail Client, their file browser, Rhythmbox, a music player, LibreOffice Writer, a word processor, the Ubuntu Software Center, Help Pages, and finally at the bottom, you may or may not have these, but the trash can. At the very far left bottom of the screen, you'll have a place where you can show the rest of the applications that are installed on the system and to again switch between your workspaces up top and then finally another search bar. Well, that's about it. Awesome job if you were able to successfully dual boot Windows with Ubuntu. It's quite exciting to start using one computer. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.